How reliable are GM pickup trucks? We're gonna find this out on this episode of Dude, I Love or Hate My Ride at Home Edition. This is a giant show because I have seven trucks to show you that you guys sent in to us and the most mileage is approaching 500,000 miles. You know, as a truck guy, it's almost impossible to find games that allow me to indulge my passion for big trucks and even bigger adventures. That is until I learned about SnowRunner. Building on the success of MudRunner, SnowRunner takes gameplay to the extreme, allowing players to drive the coolest rigs across 11 untamed maps to deliver goods safely. With a new advanced physics engine and maps up to four times as large, SnowRunner has hundreds of missions that can be tackled however you like, and allows multiplayer co-op in groups of up to four players. You can customize the look and performance of your trucks to help conquer the most extreme terrain and find the best possible path to complete your mission. Available for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, the fully rendered interiors of each truck make it feel like you're really in the action. And for the best possible gameplay, I strongly recommend you guys check it out with friends. Now click the link in the description below to play the game, and a huge thank you to Focus Home Interactive for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to your regularly scheduled programming. So let's jump right into this with the GMC Sonoma, which is not the truck you see behind me, but I have a GMC Sonoma midsize truck, I have several full-size half tons, and I even have that heavy-duty truck you see behind me. And here's Jace with his 2002 GMC Sonoma midsize truck with over 400,000 miles. Let's check it out. So this is my 2002 GMC Sonoma. If you saw all the videos of the Tacoma and how everyone, everyone was saying how reliable these are. It's, it's got a little bit of rust here and there, but I've had it for about almost two years and it's done the job. But with the, Taco the Tacomas and the Toyotas that thought they had a lot of miles and were super reliable, this has got 422,000 and it's ran great ever since. This truck was originally from Idaho. The guy would put about 300 miles on it every day. And it does the job. As you can see, it got stereo in the back. Stereo is worth more than the truck combined. But, I mean, it does the job, but starts up every time. Don't mind that. See, starts up every time. Sounds great too. Don't mind the clutch fan. Super loud. It's the automatic V6. Yeah, it's about it. It sounds great. It runs like a champ. Don't mind that noise over there but it sounds pretty good. Kind of dirty, but... Yeah, it does the job. All right, Jace, I picked up a little bit of sarcasm in your voice, but you have one solid truck right there. We usually rate trucks on this show, and I'm gonna give your truck, um, let's see, maybe a five. Uh, because it has lasted over 422,000 miles. But I love how you show around the truck and also show some of the rust spots and how you say, oh, never mind that little clank and little noise and little clutch, etc., etc. But as long as that truck still gets you to work and gets you back and does the job, I think that's what matters. Pretty nice to see. And that 4.3 liter V6, is still chugging, at least in this video. Next up on the list is a Chevrolet Suburban. This is a 2002 model, and of course, well, you may know this, but 
It has a 5.3 liter V8 under the hood. And Oscar submitted this video. Let's see exactly what this truck is all about. And he's coming to us from New York. Let's check it out. Hi there, TFL. This is Oscar coming at you from a windy and rainy New York City. Thank you guys for the channel. I'm a big fan. I've been been uh, watching daily now for about five, six years. And thank you for the for the good content. Uh, this is uh, in o an O2 Suburban, uh, 5.3, 227, so almost 230,000 miles right now. Flew out to California. Uh, it's one owner. It was one owner before I got it. I, I knew the family. They were uh, about to trade it in for a a new GMC, and I, I knew I've had these Suburbans in the past, and I know they're they're mechanically they're very strong, and uh, usually what gets them in the Northeast here is the rust. So uh, that's why I was, you know, as soon as I heard about this, I, I flew out there and picked it up and drove it back to New York. And the reason I wanted to make this video is I think that right now these trucks are kind of the, the best medium of a, of a kind of like not too old, not too new. You can pick these up very cheap and you get a lot of a lot of a truck, a lot of car for the money. But the main reason, you know, I didn't want the four wheel drive is that when I picked this up, this was at 194,000 miles. That's uh, two years ago and now it's at 227. So I drive a fair bit and mostly highway driving. Last fall at around 220-ish thousand miles, the transmission had to get rebuilt and I had a shop here, a local shop do it. It didn't leave me stranded, I, I caught it early and I really, you know, I really love this truck. I'm a musician, I'm a drummer, I need the space. I put about 15,000 miles a year on it. You know, we take it on tour sometimes with my band. It's been all over the country. Vermont, Chicago, Detroit, Florida, everywhere. Um, so, and it's never left a strand. And these are, you know, the yeah, engines are very robust. It doesn't leak any oil, doesn't burn any oil. I do oil changes myself for the most part. Uh, I've had to change, you know, you could you could say pretty much sensors go. After 200,000 sensors go, but they're cheap. You can pick them up 20, 30, 40 bucks for these, these trucks, 40, 50 for some of them, but still, you swap out a sensor, an EF sensor, I've done, you know, rear, uh, the vapor vent valve, purge valve, you do nap sensor, O2 sensors. I feel like these interior interiors get a lot of, you know, people give them a lot of crap for being, you know, cheap GM, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, cheap uh, GM quality. But the reality is that, yeah, I mean, they're, they're hard plastic. You're not going to find any... German, you know, soft touch niceness in here. But that being said, you know, with 230,000 miles, it has no cracks. Um, it's held up really well. I feel like ergonomically, it's a really well laid out interior. I like the, you know, truckiness of it. Um, it's got a sunroof, which I wish it didn't because I, I don't like sunroofs. Uh, headliners held up well. Leathers held up well, I know. You know this is not the nicest leather the the one one thing i will say is the the driver's seat the previous owner had reupholstered um they usually over there they crack in, right at the edge and show you the the miles let's see down there it's at a 226,953. um probably gonna be hard to show but uh that's a little part of the frame you know it's uh pretty much all of the frame looks like this it's got absolutely zero rust you can see up there um there's a little bit of flaking on the on the wax coating um, but then you know the, the fluid film helps helps to kind of you know help helps to to cover up those spots and uh but yeah i mean this rust hat though this truck is absolutely zero rust anyway thank you guys so much um thanks for the great great uh content uh, love you guys over at tfl cheers bye bye
Thank you, Oscar. Uh, your Suburban 2002 model actually looks in really good shape, especially for being on the East Coast. And uh, so the body looks great. You're saying that your engine and your powertrain is lasting you pretty good. And the interior is okay, but I'm beginning to see a trend that the interior on some of these older GM trucks are not lasting um, as good as you would hope. And I can attest to that personally. I used to own a 2002 Silverado 2500 diesel. And I did have a couple rips in my seats as well and a couple of buttons missing on my um, stereo. Oscar, I give your Suburban a six out of 10. And the reason for that is because you have one clean Suburban. And like you say, maybe you don't have to buy a brand new SUV to still have a good looking truck that's big and useful. So thank you for sending that in. And we're switching coasts now. Uh, we're going to California with Jose and he's gonna tell us all about his truck. And this video is a little bit shaky, but I think it shows another unique perspective on some of these older rigs, especially with a 5.3 liter V8. Let's check it out. Hello everyone. Uh, today I would like to show off my 2004 Chevrolet Silverado. I'm gonna show you a little backstory, a quick tour around the truck, some things I like about the truck, some things I don't like about the truck. The first thing I did was uh, take out all the chrome and added these uh, steel, uh, these uh, black steel bumpers, and I also removed the chrome grill with this uh, black grill. Um, I also uh, removed the original wheels and tires and added the, these off-roading tires and these aftermarket uh, rims. One of the things I don't like about uh, this truck is first off these things are pretty easy to steal. Uh, any thief can just uh, wa walk in and just uh, steal this thing in like three minutes. So that's why I added this uh, aftermarket uh, alarm system. And I, I also added a kill switch that's hidden in the interior. And um, another thing I don't like is uh, the interior right here. It has a leather interior. That's pretty good. But in this generation of GM trucks, uh, GM went, uh, went real cheap on the seats. It had like a huge uh, rip in here and it looked pretty bad. So uh, that's why I decided to change it and I added this uh, new one. This uh, this is vinyl, but it looks pretty good. It makes it look brand new. Uh, cheap GM plastic. Look, as you can see right here, it's uh, breaking. And then there's stuff like this. And then this this was like uh, coming off. So I, I added this um, stuff. Well, my dad added this stuff right here. It also comes with a uh, four wheel drive. Uh, Two high, four high, four low. It also has auto four wheel drive. And um, <clears throat> I have taken this thing off roading several times. And um, uh, this thing does a pretty good job off roading. Uh, it has never let me down. It has 187,000 miles on it. Yep, 187, 186. But I think this truck still has a lot of life left. Because these 5.3 Vortex are indestructible. They never let you down. Well, as long as you maintain it, then it'll last forever. And there's the exhaust. It's a stock exhaust and it actually sounds pretty good in my opinion. Uh, I am planning to add like a Flowmaster or a Magnaflow in the future. Or a Borla. And uh, yeah, stay safe during this coronavirus pandemic. And uh, see you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you, Jose, for submitting the video. Uh, really interesting. Um, you have quite a few models on your truck, what, about 187,000. Um, you're saying that you're not getting great fuel efficiency on your truck, but the powertrain has been fairly reliable. Uh, you've had a couple of other issues, especially you mentioned, it's interesting that you mentioned about theft and how you're protecting your truck and also the modification you've done. And of course, thank you for showing us the interior of your truck because some of the panels are becoming to be a little bit loose. But you're actually saying that your four-wheel drive system works great. Uh, I'm gonna give your truck another six out of 10 because it's a solid vehicle, it looks like, and it takes you off-road. 
And that's, I think, what's the most important part. Um, of course, that interior you're also taking care of with the replacement of your seat. All right, so now we're switching gears to a heavy duty truck. Uh, this is a 2003 GMC 2500 heavy duty with the diesel Duramax. And Christopher has submitted this video. And this truck from the first glance just appears to be gorgeous. Let's see what Christopher has to say about his rig. Now it's a diesel. Hello, TFL viewers. My name's Christopher. I live in Tennessee, and this is my contribution to the dude I love or hate my ride. This is my 2003 GMC Sierra 2500. So dad owned the truck from February 2005, and then he sold it to me in May of 2014. And in that time, I've done a front leveling kit. I've done a four inch turbo back exhaust. I've done the infab uh, nerf, nerf bar steps. Um, I've done a S and B cold air intake and a PPE boost increase valve. The truck has right just under 230,000 miles at this time. And of course, if you're familiar with these trucks, you know, this has the LB seven engine, which was the first generation of the 6.6 .6 Duramax. So naturally it's, it had the common injector failure around 100 and i want to say 150,000 miles but it's done fine ever since but let me show you the inside now this truck has a tan cloth interior which i kind of wish it had the darker gray that was an option this year but the tan's okay and when it's clean it, it looks all right i do have weather tech floor mats in there so that's helped save the carpet over the years i added a jvc touchscreen stereo with bluetooth and usb sirius xm all that kind of stuff this one of course has a flip up console that can be used as a third seat if you need to but i think i've used it maybe twice since i've had the truck but overall it's in really really clean shape for a 2003 here's the back seat this is where i spent many many road trips as a as a kid and then now i get to raise my family in the same truck which is kind of cool um, of course it does have a little rip here which most of these do this generation um, all the power features work and everything let me step up in here and As you can see it fires right up now if you know much about these trucks you know that the this gauge cluster is known to be problematic well mine all my gauges work fine however my as you can see in the picture my gear indicator light does not light up so it won't show you if you're in park reverse neutral drive you know anything like that but over the years i've learned to just kind of go by feel and then at nighttime, half of the speedometer doesn't light up. Well, it lights up, but it's very dim. But other than that, everything works. The air is ice cold. Um, I do have a brake controller installed. My dad actually did that when he had the truck. Again, thank you guys for watching. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. And we'll see you all down the road. Take care. Bye-bye. Christopher, thank you for submitting this truck. Indeed, it's very clean, very nice. And I'm a little bit biased because I used to own a truck very similar to this, 2002 heavy duty Chevy. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it 10 out of 10. Uh, I think this truck has lasted really well. You've taken really good care of it. And that Duramax with 230,000 miles, it's probably just breaking in. And this truck will probably uh, be useful to you for many, many more years to come. So thank you for submitting it and letting us know exactly what's going on with your rig. This 2004 Chevy Suburban and Christopher submits it to us from Illinois near Chicago area. And well, let's see what Christopher has right here. And I live in the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. And this is my 2004 Chevrolet Suburban. It is an LS, which means it's moderately equipped 
with a 5.3 liter V8, a four speed 4L 60E automatic transmission, four x four with a govlock in the rear differential. I love this vehicle. I've considered finding a rust free donor truck to totally restore this truck. I figure for about $50,000, I could do it. And it would be cheaper than buying one new. No issues with this truck. Starting at the front, the engine and transmission have been rock solid. No leaks, no issues, always starts. It even started in 30 below zero. That's not wind chill, that's actually standing temperature multiple times. Fuel economy, pardon me, fuel economy is okay at 15 in the city and 18 in the highway. Engine power is more than sufficient for me. It is not fast, but it's plenty of power for my uses. And how do I use it? Well, I use it for family trips, hunting trips, fishing trips, hauling firewood, and modest towing. I have a family of five plus dogs. The Suburban swallows all of our gear and does not complain. Multiple family trips and hunting trips with a full load inside, roof rack carrier on top, and a four by eight trailer behind. I mean loaded, and she handles it just fine. I said, yes, she handled it just fine, and that is correct. It is a she, her name is Black Betty. Off-road use is in the mud and the snow on a regular basis. Hunting, fishing, cutting and hauling firewood are Betsy's finer points. Aftermarket add-ons. Well, as we saw on the front of the truck, she has the four headlights, and I have a relay on the truck that allows me to put the low beams and the high beams on at the same time. It sends a lot of light down the road, and I really like that, especially driving on dark roads late at night. Um, and vent visors. All my vehicles have vent visors on them. I love vent visors. Inside Betty, she has cloth seats, and I love the velour seats. It has integral seat belts, which I find very practical. Her blend door actuators that control the temperature settings on the vehicle. Um, there behind the dash, as well as the heater core, both of which are not acting 100%. Unfortunately, I have to tear apart the entire dashboard in order to get at them. And uh, I am not gonna do that. It's a very involved and lengthy process, so I guess I'm living with that. Recently, the brake lines went bad. That was an expensive fix. It was about $3,000, but well worth it as I plan to keep driving this vehicle. Uh, the right front bearing went, which is very typical for the Chevrolets, as well as I have a, severe, a very severe rust issue. Um, there has been moderate 4x4 issues on this vehicle, all of which I was able to fix really easy if you're handy enough and can watch a little bit of YouTube. The rust is the primary issue on the vehicle. As you can see back here, we're a side swipe because this vehicle is left on the street 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for its entire life. Um, the body is going to fall off the vehicle before the engine and powertrain ever quit. As you can see, the rust is, is definitely quite bad. Um, and it bothers me quite a bit. But what can you expect from a vehicle parked outside all the time? I did buy it used at about uh, 2010 with 70,000 miles on it. It now has 150,000 miles on it. And um, I love this vehicle. Christopher, thank you for submitting your Suburban. The reason why I included it on this list is because this truck has lived outside most of its life, especially in the Chicago area. It's been parked on the street. And uh, thank you for showing us all the details, especially some of the rust and what's going on with that, because that's an important part of having a reliable truck. I'm gonna give you Suburban a six out of 10, because it's a hardworking vehicle that's lived outside its whole life. And I, I think it's got some more years left in it. Now right here is a 2012 GMC Sierra 1500 and it's a newer generation truck but still has a lot of miles and Justin has submitted it so let's see what this truck has in store. Hi TFL truck this is Justin from Tennessee and in front of me is my uh, 2012 GMC Sierra 1500 it's a work truck goes off-road quite a bit I got some cheap mud tires on it that I wouldn't go with again and uh fuel tank 135 gallon I've owned it since uh, 120,000 miles and uh, I don't know if the previous owner had any issues with it but I haven't except for the uh, brake drums in the rear are needing replaced I don't like those brake drums not a fan but uh, I'll show you the miles started up
look under the hood here. Totally stock. I just did a tune-up on it a couple months ago. Stock air box and everything. But yeah, nothing to see really. So I guess that's it. Y'all stay safe and uh, thanks for watching this. Thank you, Justin, for submitting this. Your truck uh, 2012 is already approaching uh, 200,000 miles, which is good. And you have some beefy tires on it, gigantic fuel tank in the bed. Uh, so thank you for letting us know about your truck and showing us a few of its uh, unique features. Um, not a lot of modifications on this one, so I'm gonna give it a six out of 10, but it looks to be very purposeful and it looks to be a, a hardworking truck. So thank you, Justin, for sending this in. This is a 1999 Chevy Silverado 1500. And this is a doozy because according to the odometer, it um, has nearly 450,000 miles on this engine and this truck. Uh, but there's some something going on with this, so I'm going to let you watch this video and then let's see what you think. Howdy TFL, uh, my name is Darren McBride, I've been watching y'all's videos for about four years now. Uh, this is my 1999 Silverado, four-wheel <clears throat> four drive, uh, it's... I've had it since about 2000, around November 2017, and it's been a good truck. I got, I replaced it with that one down there. That's a 2005 GMC Sierra, but uh, this one, uh, it's, you know, it's showing its age, you know. It used to live up in Chicago, Illinois for I mean, most of its life, probably about 15 years of it. And then it come down here, and I bought it from a car lot. But uh, it's got my dad's boat on it right now. But it's got some garbage, but that's going to be taken off pretty soon. But uh, these wheels were on it when I bought it. Uh, I put tires on it. Those are BF Goodrich uh, rugged terrain. Uh, all in all, she's done pretty good. Uh, can't complain, you know. It, do be surprised by the miles is on it uh, right here in this left corner spot that this i have had a differential on there trying to figure out what was wrong with it and got fluid all over the tailgate but uh let's walk around to the other side this is the other side of it uh had an exhaust tip on here and uh, about a year ago somebody stole it not as bad this side's not as bad as the other one she was a good running truck and she still runs pretty good. Well, I'll give you a start up and let you hear her and show you the odometer. That's how many miles is on her. But actually, my mistake. Now I forgot. That's not the actual miles. The owner who had this before me, it had rolled back a hundred thousand miles before I got it. So it actually has around five hundred and thirty something thousand miles. So Yeah, she's nice, you know. The transmission on this truck is not the same one from factory. The one from factory went out about 412,000 miles. The reason why this headlight, it looks newer is because I hit a buck a while back. So uh, his antler busted the other. It's a good truck, good running truck, you know. Can't complain. Can't beat a Chevy, I, I can say that. So, oh, thank you, uh, thank you to your fellow for your time. And keep on doing a good video. I am very impressed with this truck. Uh, I've looked through a lot of different GMs that you guys have submitted, uh, probably about 60 different vehicles. A lot of them were newer. A lot of the Chevy Colorados that you guys sent us were new trucks with not a lot of miles. Uh, but this one has the most. And I don't know uh, how you can roll back an odometer 
uh, like within the digital odometer here. But having nearly 500,000 miles is very impressive. The truck seems to be tired, but it's still going and it's still carrying all your loads and your trailer that you have hooked up to it. So that's pretty impressive. And uh, one thing is clear to me, the powertrains on these trucks are lasting and they're relatively simple to fix if they do break but the interiors are not lasting as well the seats are usually ripped the uh, door cards are usually coming apart um, and of course there's some rust problems but old trucks uh, no matter what manufacturer may have some rust issues especially you know on the frame and the bed sections so I think at the end of the day, we could say that GM trucks are reliable on the powertrain, but maybe for this era of truck that I showed you today, this is early 2000s and late 1990s, uh, the interiors and maybe some of the body components are not lasting quite as long. And guys, feel free to email us at askatfltruck.com. If you have another high mileage truck, uh, you can submit it to us, or if you have any questions or comments, we've already done the Ford trucks, Toyota trucks, now these GM trucks. So we're gonna continue to Ram and Dodge, and of course Nissan, and maybe some of the unique trucks as well. So we're gonna continue our quest for the most reliable truck in the country. And thank you and go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real world truck reviews. Yeah.